Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. The Honda Jet is about to tour Europe. The Cessna Latitude does better than expected. STC approved for a turbo normalized Cessna 210. I'm Brie Cross, it is May 20th, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The Honda Aircraft Company announced progress and Honda Jet program achievements during a press conference at the 2015 European Business Aviation Convention and Exhibition in Geneva, Switzerland. The Honda Jet is making its first appearance in Europe and will begin a demonstration tour following the convention. The European demonstration tour follows a successful tour in Japan to cultivate awareness for business aviation. The Honda Jet was featured at public and private events at six airports with flight demonstrations. Immediately following the show, Honda Aircraft will begin a demonstration tour with Honda Jet dealers in Europe. Private demonstration flights will be offered in Poland, four locations in the UK, two locations in Germany, and a stop in Switzerland. Three production Honda Jets have flown thus far and another 20 are in the production flow. Deliveries are scheduled to begin after final FAA type certification is achieved. Cessna also had an announcement at the 2015 European Business Aviation Convention and Exhibition. They say their Citation Latitude will enter the market with final range and runway performance specifications that exceed previous projections. The improved specifications will be part of the aircraft's imminent FAA certification. With the full flight test program now complete, the aircraft performance has yielded further improvements in aircraft range and runway performance. The 2,850 nautical miles at long range cruise distance is an increase of 150 nautical miles. And the improved takeoff distance of 3,580 feet is shorter than previously anticipated. Performance specifications at certification will also reflect the high speed cruise range of 2,700 nautical miles. The flight test program for the Latitude began with its first flight in February 2014. Since then, the program has grown to include four test articles that have flown 690 flights and amass 1,700 flight hours. After the break, upgrade your Cessna 210 with a new engine option. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Now certified Aspen Avionic single band ADS-B, ATX-100, and ATX-100G transceivers are the next-gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The FAA has issued an STC to Vitato Aviation in Chillicothe, Ohio, to equip the Cessna P210 and T210 with a turbo-normalized IO550P engine. Turbo-normalization is similar to turbocharging, but limits the compressed air to pressures at or near sea level. Phytotow system takes advantage of the P210's existing turbocharger and converts it to turbo-normalize the engine. However, the P210's existing Macaulay propeller was not able to meet vibration requirements with the new system. Hartzell Propeller was asked to design new propellers to accompany the turbo-normalized setup. Hartzell engineered two aluminum scimitar props to resolve the problem. With some 2,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. Donna's father's nickname for her when she was a little kid, uh, when she would tend to get into trouble, would be uh, 
Miss Muffin. In this video, you sit in the shade of a steerman parked at EAA Air Venture and visit with the owners who just enjoy flying for the sake of doing it. Their story is typical of why people learn to fly and stick with it. Search Oshkosh Veterans on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, Boeing is looking for workers in the Puget Sound region. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Boeing's Ray Connor says the company could hire as many as 30,000 workers in the Puget Sound region over the next few years. To that end, the executive said a major recruitment effort will be undertaken in local area high schools. Congresswoman Dina Titus will host a national symposium on aviation leadership on June 8th in Nevada's Congressional District No. 1. The objective is to bring together aviation and aerospace leaders with federal officials to discuss the importance of these industries. The organization Airlines for America forecasts that summer 2015 air travel will rise to its highest level ever. They report that U.S. airlines achieved a strong operational performance and improved profitability in the first quarter despite the harsh winter. The search is on for a pilot who allegedly stole an airplane leased by his employer on May 8th in Palo Alto, California. The plane's last known position was near the Mexican border about 70 miles offshore on a southwesterly heading. Three new board members were voted in by WAI members at the association's annual membership meeting held during its annual conference. They are Deborah Hecker, Marcy Veroni, and Abington Welch. Two existing board members were re-elected. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. A deal to send a 70-year-old Martin Mars airplane from Canada to a Naval Aviation Museum in Florida has been stopped by Canada's Heritage Minister. The Mars entered service with the U.S. Navy towards the end of World War II, and only seven of these large flying boats were ever produced. Wayne Coulson of Port Alberni, British Columbia, owns two of the Martin Mars seaplanes, one of which is being used as an aerial firefighter. Coulson was working with the National Naval Aviation Museum in Pensacola, Florida, to send one of the aircraft to the museum in exchange for an unspecified number of U.S. military planes, some of which would be converted into water bombers. But Canadian Heritage officials say the plane may be cultural property of Canada, and the Cultural Property Export and Import Act requires him to get the approval of a panel for special export permit for the airplane. A deal has been proposed that would keep one of the Mars seaplanes in a Canadian museum and allow the other one to go to Florida. Whatever the resolution, we at ANN support preserving these remarkable airplanes. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.